Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, there's been another earthquake in Turkey. And uh, some interesting details, I want to look at this, I want to look at uh, Israel in relation to this again, and then some updates with the Salt Lake Temple. As you know, it's being uh, renovated and uh, they're doing a lot of work on it to help protect it against future earthquakes. And uh, there, there's a new bit of information about the Salt Lake Temple uh, that I, I didn't know until just recently, So, but I'll save that toward the end. Okay, so I got this email from Chris Camp. NPR, a new earthquake hits Turkey as teams still respond to earlier catastrophic quake. Yeah, if you've been watching the channel for just a little while, you know that, uh, or if you've just been watching the news, you know that there was a major earthquake that hit Turkey. A really major earthquake. Um, so it says here, a new earthquake hits Turkey as teams still respond to earlier catastrophic quake. Turkish authorities say a magnitude 6.4 earthquake followed by a magnitude 5.8 tremor struck the Antakya region around 8 p.m. local time Monday. The quake also was also felt in Syria. And then I got a comment here from Carla Mingham, and she says, The earthquake <clears throat> opened a chasm just outside the city of Antakya, uh, which was Antioch in the Bible. Which that, that's kind of interesting, and we're going to look at Antioch. Um, it was 900 feet long and as wide as a football field uh, that was right down the middle of an olive orchard. So symbolic that the earthquake split the earth in two and in an olive gro grove, no less. It's a huge valley now. When Christ comes, he will split the Mount of Olives in two. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> if you guys haven't seen, I actually I did a video about that uh, five days ago. It's this one right here. More details, amount of olives literally cleaved in twain. I talked about it uh, in a live stream, but you'd want to watch this video right here because, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty interesting happening, right? And then uh, make sure to watch my, my recent videos. I, I don't know why, but not a lot of people were interested in this one, uh, the second coming Valley of Decision. This was a really interesting video. And then this one, too, about Melchizedek's temple. Um <laughs> I had no idea that this even existed, and there's a lot of really cool details when it comes to Melchizedek's temple. But there's actually really reason to believe that this was the temple that Melchizedek used. Um, so just make sure to check that out. But anyway, so thank you, Carla. Thank you, Chris Camp. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's look at the map here. So this blue one is the one that's in question. This is the, the newer... Um, large earthquake uh the one before <clears throat> it was on the 5th of february it was right here a 7.8 and then after that i had an aftershock of 7.5 and then you can see the whole region has just been crazy with the earthquakes right so some time has gone by and now we have this one that just happened yesterday um <clears throat> and uh the location is interesting being near Antioch, but also being by the, uh, the olive grove. Now I have that, uh, pulled up on Google earth. Okay. So I, I uh, did a little pin for it so I could remember, uh, this is where the olive grove, uh, was split into the, the Mount of Olives in Turkey. And then here's Antakya up here. So Antioch. Okay. So it's pretty close, but this, happened as a result of that first earthquake and then it just so happens that Antioch was was hit yesterday all right going back now I know a lot of you watch uh, Dutch Sense and so do I he is pretty good at predicting earthquakes uh, just you know um, he's good at get <coughs> uh, getting the approximate location and size and stuff like that and so I decided to watch his uh video talking about this turkey earthquake and he's thinking that uh, if there are further earthquakes you see these pl the plate boundaries right here okay this uh this red line uh i've noticed that i don't watch him like a whole lot but i've noticed that basically his theory and it, it does seem to be true is that when you have big earthquakes the pressure and stuff kind of follows the the plate boundaries and so I was wondering if he was going to say that uh, there, there'd be a forecasted earthquake for down here in Israel. 
but no, he says that most likely it's going to go along this uh, fault line right here and then probably up into Europe, most likely. So, <clears throat> but there is some interesting stuff with Israel, but okay. So, okay, hold on, hold on here. Let's, let's do this in order. So first let's look at the Wikipedia article list of earthquakes 2023 and uh you'll notice now we have a second earthquake with this one that just happened uh that's made the by death toll um category here on wikipedia so the first earthquake was this now now look at this um <clears throat> i am going to go ahead and update it according to wikipedia even though I haven't been able to verify this with uh, like other sources, I'm not sure where they got this number of 48,999. Um, this sounds like they probably read an estimate that uh, that said something like there have been at least 49,000 uh, deaths. And that's probably why they put the 999. But I'm going to go with it, though, because whoever is coming on here and updating this they're they're clearly an earthquake enthusiast and so i trust their information uh this may go down it may go up we'll just have to see but let's go ahead and update this right now so forty eight thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. so basically forty nine thousand, right so let's go to my earthquake tracker <clears throat> i'll zoom in so I last had recorded 47,038. So now we're going all the way up to uh, 49,000. 48,999. Okay. And then I'll need to update it on my second coming timeline as well. Here it is, February 6th. And this is now going to change to 48,999. Uh, which is just, it's mind boggling to me. It is that, that just, that's just huge. Um, there's still nothing to really indicate that it would be, it would go higher than what happened in 2008, where there was one earthquake that killed 87,000 people. Um, but here's like one thing to consider. Okay. As we're looking at, uh, Wait, this is 2010? No, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I was going to... Okay, never mind. Forget that. Okay, so we got that updated. All right, now let's go back here. Um, I want to point this out again, and I had brought this up in a previous video. It's really interesting to me that already in 2023, we're, we're still in the second month. We're not even done with February yet, and we've already had five earthquakes that were in the 7.0 to 7.9 range okay you see this so here's us right here we've already had five and compare that to the year 2017 where they only had six for the entire year for the entire year and then comparing this to last year 2022 we're uh, pretty much already halfway there now um i don't know what's going to happen the rest of the year and i'm no Earth, uh, earthquake expert but that seems rather high and uh, i don't know if that's a sign of things to come i don't know if like we're going to blow these other years out of the water or you know maybe things will quiet down after this I have, I have no idea but just looking at it right now in february it seems like things are kind of things are kind of crazy uh, when it comes to the earthquakes let's take a look at the guardian there's a little bit out of here that i wanted to read death toll from latest earthquake Earthquakes in Turkey reaches eight. So that's referring to this most recent one by itself. I mean, just look at that picture, buildings tipping over and then just all this destruction. Okay, the toll from two earthquakes that hit Turkey and Syria on Monday, two weeks after powerful quakes killed more than 47,000 people. So see here, they're saying more than 47,000 has risen to eight with up to 300 recovering from injuries and up to a dozen buildings toppling on both sides of the border. The widespread anxiety and panic sparked by the latest tremors has rattled a region that is still coming to terms with the devastation caused earlier this month. The seismic activity was felt in Egypt, <coughs> Israel, Jordan, and Lebanon, where schools and public services were closed on Tuesday, partly to calm people's nerves. 
no, that's interesting. Are they saying that in all four of those countries, schools and public services were closed? It doesn't, that doesn't quite, I can't like picture that happening, but okay, I'll, I'll just take their word for it. Uh, millions of people fled ruined cities across Turkey in northern Syria, which were both shaken violently by the two tremors on Monday evening. Now fear of the, now fear for their lives. Now fear for their lives in temporary shelters. So it's already yeah. So it's like it's like a nightmare over there, and it's winter, and it's cold, and um, it's it's just a horrific situation. Okay, the first six point three magnitude quake struck near the Turkish Turkish city of Antiaka or er, Antakya, which was all but destroyed by the February 6th earthquake and is largely uninhabitable. Do you understand what that says? It means that the city was essentially destroyed. An entire city was destroyed, which um, I don't think it says it here in this article, but when we were looking at this before with the, the first earthquake on February 6th, it was talking about um, the number of structures damaged and destroyed being in like the hundreds of thousands, right? And who knows uh, the impact on the infrastructure in the area, roads, bridges, things like that. So, yeah, Antakya, which was all but destroyed, and then you have this this next earthquake that hit even closer to Antakya. So it's a really bad time for you if you're in Antakya, which is Antioch in the Bible. And, uh, you know, let's take a look at that right now. I just wanted to see if there's like any significance to Antioch. So when you look in the Bible dictionary, this is what it says. One in Syria, an important city on the uh, Orontes or Orontes, founded in 300 BC by Seleucus Nicator. In New Testament times, the third city in the Roman Empire. I'm assuming that means the like third largest city. It was the chief meeting point of East and West, in the most disreputable city during Paul's life. It was a it was a center of Gentile Christianity. So that's kind of interesting, right? A meeting point of East and West. It's like if you have, in one sense, if in this this definition's sense, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's like the center point um, between the East and the West of the world, of the world. It's like a world center point, not the center of the world, just, you know, uh, with the civil, the civilizations at that time, the way that the world was laid out at that time, a center point. So does it mean anything? I don't know. I don't know, but it's interesting to note. In the Wikipedia article, I wanted to read this first part. Okay, Antioch on the Orontes, uh, if that's how that's pronounced, uh, was a Hellenistic city. So we're talking about, uh, when you're talking about Hellenism, you're talking about Greeks and Greek culture and society <clears throat> founded by Seleucus the first Nicator in 300 BC. The city served as the capital of the Seleucid empire. And uh, when we're talking about that, again, remember Daniel in his vision of the four beasts and also King Nebuchadnezzar and his dream about the statue. So this is the, the Greek portion of it. So first the Babylonians, and then after that, the Persians and Midians. And then after that, the Greeks. Okay, which would include this. Okay, so <clears throat> the city served as the capital of the Seleucid Empire and later as regional capital to both the Roman and Byzantine Empire. So that's a, it's an important city. Um, these are two empires that... Uh, scourged and harassed and dominated uh, the Jews, right? During the Crusades, Antioch served as the capital of the Principality of Antioch, one of the four crusader states that 
were founded in the Levant. Its inhabitants were known as Antiochenes. Um, the modern city of Antakya in Hatay province in Turkey was named after the ancient city, which lies in the ruins of the Orontes River. It did not overlap in habitation with the modern city. Antioch was founded near the end of the 4th century BC <clears throat> by uh, Seleucus I, or Sel Seleucus I, Nekator, I don't know, one of uh, Alexander the Great's generals, as one of the four cities of the Seleucus of Syria. The city's location offered geographical, military, and economic benefits to its occupants. Antioch was heavily involved in the spice trade and lay within easy reach of the Silk Road and the Royal Road. So, again, remember, it's not just that this earthquake hit there uh, yesterday, but also this is the, the, the general location where that Mount of Olives uh, was split in two. And you can see historically how important this place was. Again, can we assign any meaning, meaning to this? I, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised, you know, in the time that we're living in and everything going on with earthquakes. We read, I, I did this video. If you didn't see it, you should really check it out. This video where... Uh, the earthquake from Turkey, the first one on April 6th, that actually damaged parts of the Dome of the Rock. And not just parts of the Dome of the Rock, but like tiles that had um, verses from the Quran that was that kind of went against Christianity. Uh, basically saying that, you know, Christ was not divine, that he was not the son of God and, and stuff like that. You know, so... <clears throat> And then we know, we're going to talk about this in a minute, the, the Salt Lake Temple is currently being prepared for earthquakes. Um, just a lot of crazy, weird things are going on right now. You know, and so, yeah, it, it would make sense to me if God is speaking through signs right now via earthquakes that uh, he would choose this place, Antioch, with its history. You know, just for those who have eyes to see, there's people that are like, you can't find, there's not meaning in everything and not everything is a sign and a symbol. That's fine. That's fine if that's your opinion. Um, and I think that's true. Maybe not everything, but I feel like there's some things that are more obvious than others and more likely. And, uh, you know, I tend to think that this is probably one of them. Okay, so let's continue. During the late Hellenistic period and Middle Roman Empire, Antioch's popula population may have reached a peak of over half a million inhabitants, <clears throat> making the city the third largest in the empire after Rome and Alexandria, and one of the most important cities in the eastern Mediterranean. Oh yeah, so there you go. That's what the Bible Dictionary was referring to. It was the third largest city in Rome. Uh, the city was the capital of the Seleucid Empire from 240 BC until 6 or 63 BC when the Romans took control, making it capital of the province of Syria and later of um, Coeli, Col, Quel, Syria. From the early 4th century, Antioch was the seat of the Count of the Orient. Okay, I'm going to skip down. Um, the city was also the main center of Hellenistic Ju Judaism at the end of the second period, second temple period. Uh, now you see this, Th this was like the problem with the Greeks, um, is that they introduced their culture, right? Hellenism. And, uh, the Jews really liked it. They loved it. And, uh, they adopted a lot of it, but then the, the uh, portion of them that were still, you know, religious and adhering to um, the Torah and the commandments and all that stuff, they realized, well, we can't just let this keep going or else we're not even going to be Jewish anymore. We're going to be, we're going to turn into Greeks. You know, Judaism is going to die. And so that's what caused um, essentially the Maccabean revolt. Uh, it was kind of a, like, it was actually kind of a civil war but it was a dispute over rejecting Hellenism and uh, sticking to traditional Judaism, right? And that's where the miracle happened, where the temple had been defiled. All the, all the olive oil was bad because 
Uh, I can't remember if, if it had been opened or desecrated or something like that, but they found one jar that was still ritualistically um, could be used for the menorah. And uh, it was only good for, I think, one day. I can't remember, <clears throat> but it lasted for eight, uh, which give, gave them enough time to uh, prepare uh uh, uh, new olive oil that up to the ritual standard right so it was a miracle and so that's where we get hanukkah from so it's interesting when you think about it this way the problem of hellenism taking hold among the jews that this city would represent that problem it would be like the heart maybe of that problem the city was also the main center of Hellenistic Judaism. So a lot of Jews were up there uh, really living the Hellenistic life life in Antioch. So it's like a symbol of Israel or Jews um, embracing a foreign culture, foreign values. Um, you know, you get what I'm saying. So <clears throat> Antioch was part of the Pentarchy. It was called the cradle of Christianity as a result of its long longevity and the pivotal role that it played in the emergence of early Christianity. The Christian New Testament asserts that the name Christian first emerged in Antioch. The city declined to uh, the city declined to relative okay, oh I see. The city declined to relative insignificance during the Middle Ages due to warfare, repeated earthquakes. You see that? And a change in trade routes, which I guess isn't surprising because, again, when we look at the plate boundary, it's right there. You know, it's right it's right by this uh, plate boundary, right? Uh, the plate boundary is actually what you have is the Arabian plate over here and then the African plate, uh, sometimes called the Nubian plate. So it just like it goes right. It goes right up through Israel and through that area. You see this? You see you see how it goes like right down through Israel. Um, in fact, it goes like right down the middle. It, not, I'm not talking about the modern state of Israel, but if you had the all the tribes and their original tribal land, you would have had the half tribe of Manasseh over here and Reuben and Gad. Uh, this fault line goes right down the middle of it, essentially, or this uh, plate boundary. I mean, it's a very interesting place for that to be. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so that, that's it for that. Okay. Now, there was a statement from the church. Um, this was for the um, the first one in, in on the 6th of, the, of, of February. Statement of support for communities impacted by earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. In response to the devastating earthquakes that hit Turkey and Syria, the Europe Central Area Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints today issued the following statement. We are deeply saddened by the tra tragic loss of many lives as a result of the earthquakes that hit Turkey and Syria. We express our love and support to the people of those countries as they deal with this terrible tragedy. Our prayers and the prayers of Latter-day Saints across Europe are with them as they begin to recover from this disaster. The church is currently reaching out to other relief organizations, both globally and in country to offer assistance. This is from the Europe central area presidency, elder Massimo, Massimo de Feo, elder Eric W. Kapischke and elder Ruben V. Aliad. All right. Um, and then here on the desert news, they did a story and I just wanted to highlight this because they're reporting, well, which they're getting it from NBC News. The quake also left more than one million people homeless during a cold winter. That's a lot of people. This is just absolutely devastating. Now, looking at Israel 365, 6.4 magnitude quake leaves several dead, um, hundreds injured in Turkey. So they do their coverage, but this is the part that I wanted to focus in on is this. And we, we've kind of brought this up in a previous video. Israel has scrambled to improve its earthquake preparedness in the wake of the Turkey disaster, with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu directing National Security Council head Sachi Hanegbi 
to quote unquote update and reiterate the steps we need to take. The NESA Internal Affairs and Environment Committee called for an emergency meeting. Look at that, an emergency meeting. And State Comptroller Matanyahu Engelman urged the government not to delay, saying the wave of deadly earthquakes in the region should be viewed as a warning. Experts have stressed that Israel, Israel's current state of earthquake readiness is concerning. A 2018 a report by the previous comptroller estimated that a major earthquake could result in 7,000 casualties and leave 170,000 people homeless. Uh, those are interesting numbers, 7 and 17. A report, well, 170. A report from last year found that six, 600,000 buildings in the country do not meet the standard for earthquake resistance. Israel is located along the Great Rift Valley, an active geological fault line presenting several significant hazards for the area, including frequent minor earthquakes and the potential for more serious seismic events. Um, the Great Rift Valley is this right here. Um, it says, while the name continues in some usages, it is rarely used in geology as it is considered an imprecise merging of separate, though related, rift and fault systems. So I think what that's talking about is technically you have the plate boundaries, right? You have this plate boundary, the Arabian plate and the Nubian plate that go right down uh, this area here where Israel's at. But then it uh, continues like this, like it goes around like that. But there must be like fault, like a fault line or something that goes that like continues down or something. It goes into Africa. So it, they're related, but geologically these are two like separate concepts, uh, plate tectonic plates, and then like a fault line. So, but those together constitute the Great Rift Valley. Okay. Israel had a long history of earthquakes with a major one occurring approximately every hundred years. The last major earthquake to hit the country was in 1927. That quake, which had a magnitude of 6.2 claimed 284 lives and injured 940. Now, uh, in that previous video, we had read that basically Israel's due for a big one right now. Uh, it was saying something to the effect that, that area experiences like a major, like a huge, huge, huge earthquake once every like 400 years. And it's been uh, more than a millennia since it's happened the last time. So there's like a really, really big one uh, that's due. And then you have a more common like this, uh, like what this is saying, approximately every hundred years, you have something that's more like this, I guess, like a 6.2. So they're basically due for both a really big one and one that's like this size and they're not really prepared. It's interesting the need in Israel and Salt Lake, of course, for being prepared against an earthquake. It's just, it, sorry, it just, it never ceases to amaze me, uh, this whole idea. Okay, now to finish this up, let's see, hit all these up. Okay, now we're moving on to... KSL, this is Salt Lake City. Massive undertaking, three years of progress on five years Salt Lake Temple renovation. Um, this, is, this is an older article. This came out January 26th. But the part that interests me is um, the part that talks about what they're going to be doing this next year. So coming this year in 2023, during 2023, crews should be installing structural steel frames inside the tower spires of the temple and will be reinforcing stone walls and towers with vertical drilling and post-tensioned cables connected to the foundation. Crews should also begin installing the base isolator system, which, should, which would serve as bearings during an earthquake. So, um, so what's going on if you don't know? I wonder if there's like a picture of the temple here somewhere. So basically they have like inside the towers. Okay. Let's see if I can inside these, these towers, 
they're basically going to have a, a cable inside that runs runs from the top and then is tightly pulled down to the bottom where the like the foundation is like the isolated base or whatever uh basically to hold it like firmly together so there's no like toppling or it keeps it like more solid so that the temple moves as like a single unit uh hopefully that makes sense i saw that like in a in a in another article um <clears throat> and then further down it says now th this is okay work is also scheduled to begin on renovating buildings around temple square closures to these buildings are expected to last into 2025 okay <clears throat> and this is one thing that I, ha I wasn't sure until just now check this out i wasn't sure exactly when the temple would be open um when the temple itself would be done and then furthermore uh, all of Temple Square, like it, it was kind of ambiguous. We had we had heard different statements. I've mentioned them on the channel, but look at this, and this is the big one. Construction began on the Salt Lake Temple and much of Temple Square at the start of 2020. The temple and surrounding buildings are scheduled to reopen after a public open house, and its rededication is expected in 2024. So this is the latest news because we had heard Elder Bendar. He was talking to reporters. When was this? I think this was at the rededication of the Washington, D.C. temple. He was like, um, you know, sometime in 2025, we'll be doing this again with the, the Salt Lake Temple. So I think the best information that he had at that time was 2025. And so I was like, oh, okay, so it's, it's going to be 2025. But no, it looks like, according to this article, um, it's moved back to 2024. Don't know exactly when. Uh, I'm sure that's basically impossible at this point because it's an ongoing construction project. Um, so nobody really knows, I don't think. But it looks like their estimate has gone back to 2024. A lot of people are looking at this as... Um, an indication as to when the second coming would happen because the, the train of thought goes like this, that, well, the Lord probably wouldn't have a major earthquake happen until this is done. Otherwise, why spend all this time and money uh, to do this? Now, the one thing that I would caution is that uh, like that, that, that sound, that sound reasoning, but the Lord could also have this happen um, to give you like a false sense of security. You know, he can do whatever he wants to. He can make, you know, the mountain over. He can turn Enzyme Peak into a, a big mountain of dollar bills if he wanted to. You know, money's not really a factor. So he could be using this as like a, a false sense of relief because there's a lot of people that think that way. You know, when I do certain videos, there's always people that will chime in, like people that are not regulars on the channel. They'll just like come across, come across the video because it's a popular video. That'll be like, well, I, I don't think that the millennia or the second coming is going to happen if they just announced all these temples or if they just did, uh, called out for more missionaries. There's people out there that are so far gone and have such a poor understanding of what the millennium is that they, I guess in their minds, they don't think that there's going to be any more temples or any more new temples constructed, or maybe they think that just absolutely everything's going to be destroyed, you know, including temples, or they don't understand that um, missionary work is going to continue into the first part of the millennium. And so for people like that, you know, they look at the Salt Lake Temple and they're like, yeah, no, the second coming is not even close because this isn't even done yet. So I would just be careful. You know, it could go either way. It could be, yeah, yeah, the Lord wants to make sure this is ready for when there's the big earthquake. Uh, maybe it'll be the worldwide earthquake that happens at the time of the second coming. Maybe that's what this is for. Um, there's just a lot of unknowns. So I would just like urge caution. Um, I think it's important to kind of track how far along they are. So as of right now, today, they're still not done with the seismic upgrading. Okay. Um, is that an indication when the second coming will happen? I, I don't know. I don't think so. But it's something to to keep in mind. So, yeah, I 
think that that's it. That's it. Just double check. I always like kick myself because there's so many times that I do a video and then afterwards I look at the tabs and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about that. No, that is it. Okay. So I <clears throat> hope you enjoyed this. Uh hope this was good information. I think the big takeaways is just that uh, Israel is on alert as a result of the earthquakes. Antioch was hit, which may or may not be important or uh, symbolic. And then the Salt Lake Temple, uh, currently they're expecting 2024 to be the year when they do the uh, open house and the dedication. Okay. All right. That's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.